Welcome back, everybody, to the Kickback Podcast. My name is Joan. We got Okiki, and we got our guest today, Tony Cortez, MMA fighter, 5-0. and 5-0. Yes, sir. You can see the belt right there. You just fought this Saturday. Saturday? Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. November we went to the 27th. fight. How'd you feel, bro? Uh, I felt good, man. It was a crazy experience, I could say that. Yeah? Yeah. Is every fight, like, nervous? Like, are you nervous for every fight, or are you just oh, ready? Oh, yeah, I get really nervous, bro. Mm. Like, yeah? really nervous. But this one wasn't too bad. You did pretty good. Yeah, I did I did pretty good. I felt mm-hmm. like... I know I can do better, but right. I'm I'm still I'm still learning as I go mm-hmm. how I can treat my body to perform at my best. Mm-hmm. But That's for cool. some reason, I've always been good at just fucking finding what the fuck to do, like right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In between rounds, anything, and my coaches really helped me a lot with that as well. So it was just like a perfect dynamic. Uh huh. And before we get into the podcast, um, you have a sponsor that you want to show. Oh, yeah, I want to shout out my sponsor, Bees Natural Store. We got CBD. She also does Ayurvedic. Um, she's an Ayurvedic practitioner. So that that will really help you if you have injuries mentally, physically. And as an MMA fighter, you know, it does come in handy, huh? It, it really does. Yeah, it really, much. really does. So you guys, you guys want to smoke this? We can yeah, if you want. I'm down. Yeah. You want I, to I, ain't, I ain't no bitch. I ain't no we're, yeah, First we're, time we're, smoking we're, on the Kickback Podcast. It smells good in here already, bro. So I don't mind. All right, let's get it. It smells, <laughs> it smells good, good in here already, bro. It smells good already. So, yeah, man. How did you feel uh, before your fight, after your fight? Before, bro, it was it was crazy because, you know, the guy that, I'm, that I fought, he was talking a lot of trash online. Like, Oh, he was he one was of those guys. Wow. Yeah, he was with the online. Okay. With the online talking, he was, yeah, yeah. he was saying that he was gonna knock me out. First round finish, flawless victory. Dude, it didn't hey, look like that at he all. He was gonna get no first round with that front kick, bro. Yeah, and then I, like, we then comes the fight. We're in the line to weigh in, and I'm standing right next to him. He's just on his phone playing video games, like not looking at me, uh-huh. acting like he phone. don't care about me. And I was just confused, bro. I was like, You're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then come to find out, bro, like You think he did that on purpose? Like to what? like try to show you that he doesn't care? Or he just like happens to be playing video games? I think he was scared. Mm. I think he was scared. Cause well, even at the weigh ins he had his time he had his hands behind his back. He was standing like that, like trying to be like a Jorge Masvidal, or just having. Yeah, him. trying to be a Jorge Masvidal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, so you sensed the but, funny. And then I, at the weigh-ins, like I grabbed his body and I was like filling up on him. I was like, "You look good, like, you look good." And then later on, he's I see him walking around like all like confident, uh-huh. like walking around like he's the shit. And then he sees me, he's like, "Ooh!" And then kind of like, just yeah, like yeah, stops. Yeah. Oh check, shit, he's he here. checks himself. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "All right, like, like I'm basically like your daddy." And it's been like that because... So you've been bitching him. Yes, because... Nah, I, he posted that on his story, right? That he was going to beat me in fucking the first all round. Sh- and all that, Yeah, all that stuff. D- didn't happen. But I had been watching his story every day. And in my head, like, watching it every day, I don't follow him, none of that. And in my head, I'm like, what's my son doing? Like, let me check... What's my son me. doing? I'm like, <laughs> doing? I'm like, let me check on my son real let quick. Let me check on my kid. Is he, is he acting right? Is he training? <laughs> like, is he waking up early? Or does yeah. he need an ass whooping? <laughs> yeah, does he need to get his ass whooped? And Sadly, it was the ass whooping. Yeah. It looked like it, huh? <laughs> it was the ass whooping, bro. Now he... You got the lighter? Oh, yeah. Here, let me get it real quick. Oh, thank you, bro. If y'all were able to watch it, actually, like, you had control the entire time. Stand up, he couldn't get you. Ground control, he couldn't get you. Like, your transitioning was a little... Yes, sir. Oh, shit. Should burn right. <laughs> but yeah, bro, we were at your fight. We had a shit ton of fun. Hello. Oh, I went. We went with my dad. I went with you. We had a shit ton of fun, man. Hell I'm of an glad. experience. I'm really glad. And we bro, were that was amazing experience, you fight. bro. Like the crowd for you, bro. Bro, <laughs> oh, ev- no, not just us. Literally, everybody, everybody was cheering you on, dude. I don't know if you heard it during the fight because you're like focused on stuff, but like. Everybody was cheering you on, bro. Yeah, I think I would hear Christian, Christian, 
And then Man. all of a sudden I hear Tony, Tony. And like was, before the fight had started, like they were doing that, right? And I was mm-hmm. staring at him and I kind of just, I, I had to smirk at him. I was like, yeah, like I got more fucking people here supporting me than you. <laughs> Damn, plays a factor. That's how, that's how, that's how we made money. Oh. Right. Hey, that's smooth. That's what I'm saying, bro. It's just clean, smooth. I really like it a lot. Here you go. Yeah. I almost I'll... baked you. I was big. <laughs> That's what's used to somebody's lighter, right? Yeah. My dad, bro. He be stealing your lighters? All the time. It's but not an accident. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He never does it on purpose. He just fucking, like, he'll be smoking, he'll hold the lighter, and then he'll just put it in his pocket, and then, like, later on, he'll leave. And so we're like, hey, 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 lighter. He's like, oh, shit. Yeah, here. So he, like, doesn't do it on purpose. Bro, you know, my neighbor, when we, uh, I would chief with him, right? And then, like, <coughs> <laughs> if he's not, he, if he can't find his uh his lighter, he'll be like, everybody stand up, check your pockets, and it's always in someone's. Never mind though. It pass me the ashtray, yeah. Bro, this is crazy. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, bro, ashed ashed up. Shit. I haven't smoked in like five months, bro. Oh, because of the lead up to the fight, or um, yeah. Okay. Basically, are you allowed to smoke CBD while you're in MMA? I think so, bro. Yeah, right? I don't. Th- it it, it definitely don't... lifted that. Actually, no. I'm lying. I I I I I smoked like two months ago before I started. My mom just. I was like, I want to smoke like the CBD, and she's like, Nah. She 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 worries more than me that I'm gonna get tired and whatnot. But does it affect? Cause I remember I started doing this shit like when I was in lacrosse, bro, and I went to games like that. It never it didn't affect it never rooms? affected me. What CBD or? Nah, I was on the pen. It's not I, gonna lie. Oh. <laughs> I think more than anything, what affects you is is vape. Oh yeah, and it's in it's in like a, it's in a spiritual way too. How it affects people. What do you mean? How? Do, what do you mean a spiritual way? Because I have a vape here, and I can agree with you that it does fuck with you. Yeah, it it does uh change your mood. It makes you. I think it makes you depressed, and yeah. it makes you have more anxiety than what yeah. you naturally do have because then you're like Fuck, where's my vape where's my hey, vape? bro now that you mention it you're right damn these are symptoms bro. yeah i never thought about it but this shit is deadly i should stop this shit hey give it to me no no give, give it if he quits right here on this podcast that would be amazing hey switch to the cbd mm. switch to the fucking cbd this here is mine no, bro, and this year so far, I've been doing good. I've been wanting to get rid of that for sure. New beginnings. And at first, I did get rid of it. I was like, Mom, you know what? I need, I need to stop this shit. Here, take this. And I did. I gave it to her, and I didn't smoke for like a good five months without my baby. <coughs> yeah, that's a long time. Yeah, I used to be addicted to vaping too. But after my trip to Peru, mm. I came back, and I really like... I'm really like getting more in tune with my my mind, body, and soul. Oh yeah, that's how was that, man? I'm aligning myself, and it's happening. It's happening at a good time. How was that? Your trip to Peru? Oh my goodness, I can't even put it into words. That's, yeah, bro, just, I saw on Instagram. It looked really cool. It was a spiritual journey. I did some ayahuasca. What is that? Ayahuasca is a it's a vine, and they also mix it with other plants, and they make it into a brew. Still want this. I think it's done right. Yeah. Yeah. They make it in. They make it into a brew. Uh huh. And it, you drink it, and it takes you on a spiritual journey, and you do it with the with the, a shaman. There's other people there too that, that are in need of of medicine, and yeah. How did you feel? Like what? What do you mean? Like a spiritual journey? Like what does it do to you? So I mean, it, ayahuasca does whatever it wants to do. Like you really have no control over it. You just gotta go for the ride. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can't even like fix fix your mental beforehand and like Yeah, beforehand, you know I mean? yeah. No, but I'm saying it's like like what it like what are the effects that it gives you? You might see stuff, uh-huh. you might uh experience things mentally, like thinking, overthinking. Hallucination. Ho- yeah, hallucinating. Mm. But, but I don't really think it's hallucinating. I think it's your for me, this is how I see it, how I like feel. Like your third eye opening. It's your like- third eye opening and like all your spirit leaving your body and and seeing things that are there, but you're not you're not constantly seeing it. Uh-huh. But if, or you really go you really go into in yourself. 
Oh, like, okay, okay, okay. So we're hallucinating, indeed. like you're not hallucinating, but you're seeing things for what they really are, type shit. Would you say that or? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was. You really go in deep within yourself, bro, and you start uh-huh. to start to learn about yourself. What like, was the thing uh, that they did? Um, there was a little. I saw it. On, I forgot where you put it, but it was on your Instagram probably. But they put something up your nose, and it looked like it burned. What was that? That that was um, hoppe. Hoppe? It's spelled R A P E, but it's pronounced Hoppe. Hoppe. And it's a, uh, it's supposed to cleanse cleanse you like with uh, bad energies. Uh huh. So when you start, you, they blow it up your nose, and then it goes to your brain, and then it's it's like a tobacco, but it's hot. It burns, yeah. Burns. Is it like like how bad was like it wasabi burn? on the scale to like wasabi or like? I've never tried wasabi, but oh. it burns though. I can say that it's probably different for everybody. But skill was off. So yeah, you, <laughs> you, you you blow it up. They blow it up your nose, and then you start kind of. You just sit there and meditate, and then you'll start spitting out black stuff. What the fuck? Some team uh, wolf bro. shit, bro. I would yeah. <laughs> I would have started tripping <laughs> if I saw black shit coming that, out of my bro. mouth. Nah, yeah, you start spitting out black stuff, and then uh-uh. yeah, you feel really good after, bro. Yeah, really good. Just relax as hell. Yo, the yeah. CBD's kicking in. Hey, the CBD's got me. Yeah, bro. It's little, got me a little, little relaxed. relaxed bro. <laughs> yeah, you might it. have just put me on something, bro. I haven't actually smoked CBD. I, I smoked uh, one joint before. I think I do this straight is, this loud. Would, I think this would help a lot of people get off of cigarettes and, and vapes. Because mm-hmm. that's people. That's what people are looking for when they're smoking cigarettes and vapes is that, that calm feeling, the easing your anxiety and stuff. But... I mean, it feels good, but I never, I never knew that about cigarettes. I just thought people just smoked that shit for fun. No, that's why when people are like stressed out, they're like, <sighs> and then they're like, oh. Did you know that me. that's also you know psychological that. wise? Like, I learned it in psychology in high school. But basically, as a baby, you're growing up sucking on a, a bottle or a nipple, right? Right. Because it comforts you. It gives if it's good. Right. That, that feeling of so that's why, like mentally, in the very, very back of your head, you can uh. Like feel that comfort from sucking on a cigarette or smoking sucking on a swear. Like, yeah, so that's why a lot of people like it. Some people don't even like the smell, the taste. They fucking hate it, but it's a comfort thing. So people just like sucking on titties and shit. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> cigarette titties. Ah, hey, cigarette titties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's weird. But CBD, like right now, I feel mellow. I feel feels cool. Yeah, that sure. that does make sense though. What you just said right now. Mm-hmm. It hit me. And then with the nick, like you smoke it, don't get any effect. But later on, you like you do feel the anxiety. I get what you say, by bro. That. If you lose your nick, you would throw your whole house around. No, just yeah, fucking cap. I'd be seeing my friends like that, and I'd be like, damn, are y'all niggas all good? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, they used to be me, bro. I'll my lose my, my sister the other day I'll too. I'll pick up my bed. Yeah, and I look under my bed. Like, how did he get? Under, they didn't even get under there. Like my bed, it, it don't have like it's not raised. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I would be, I would want it that bad. Like, I'd be like, what the fuck? Where'd it go? <laughs> like, like that. One time, I, uh, I, I forgot where I went, but I took my vape with me, and I left it in the trunk of my car. And I honestly, like, I didn't know I left it there. And I was looking for it all over my house. I was like, damn, I lost it. Bought another one. Two years later, I find it in the trunk of my car. Wow! Like, wow! Two Did years. It still worked. Yeah, it still <laughs> worked. I didn't Imagine hate it because that's old those fucking. Vapes are that they sell like huh? at the fucking smoke shops. Mm-hmm. Imagine how old they are. What? Which which ones? The vapes that they sell. Oh yeah, they don't be changing them out until it, it they sell out. That's what I'm saying. They're old. They're bro. Old as fuck, bro. They, you're not even getting the new shit. This is probably tastes better. All that. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, if especially if it's like a like a gas station or something, and a lot of people don't go there, then it's like. They put like the new shipment ones like in the back damn damn near sometimes. Well, that, yeah, the C V D got you, huh? <laughs> yeah. But I always <laughs> <laughs> It did. Yeah, he's about to fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, right. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna fall asleep. Nah, yeah, you just changed. Yeah. Your eyes are a little heavy though, huh? Highlights are heavy, bro, but <laughs> it's just good. But yeah, bro, um what were we talking about? We were talking about spirituality. 
Yeah. Oh, my sister's really into the spiritual stuff. Yeah, like like crystals and all that. Yeah, reading yeah. tarot cards, stuff like that. Oh, I just got a tarot reading done. Yo, yeah, yeah. Swear. Yeah, they help Same a lot. here. Yeah. That's Bro, right. dude, she read both of ours, and we literally talked about it in the last podcast. It's so crazy. It Everything is. is just like flipped around. It's still flipping. And bro. yeah. It's not done. Mm-mm. Still more to go. Hey, and you only got it for a week. <laughs> that week has passed. You should start it for the one, the next one for a month. So you see your trip is tonight. Wait, wait, no. I, I started so, mine for uh the six month or whatever. Was six month? Yeah, bro. I'm always a long term dude. Are wait, you sure? That's where I thought you got. Well, well not week. really always if you seen my last TikTok. But. What are you talking about? Um, We did the. Uh, Terror cards. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. My sister read us our tarot cards, and it told us like uh, basically what's going to happen in the next like span, span of a month or six months. I think I got like six months, and it, I I don't know. I remember you getting one one week. Nah, bro, oh bro, nah. I have this one friend. She does astrology readings and tarot readings. Her name's Eve. She also works at my mom's store. If you guys want a tarot okay. reading or astrology reading, bro, she's amazing, bro. She does so good with her job, like. And it's like, it's really something I really believe in because a lot of the stuff that she tells me comes into fruition. And then mm. people think that, oh, no, you're manifesting it. But even if I am manifesting it, the stuff that she's telling me is good. It's, it's good. So, yeah, my sister's read mine, his and my friend Ariel's. And she read all of hers. And even Ariel calls me every once in a while. She's like, dude, your sister. like She's actually, she's it's like a talent yeah. of hers. But, my, but no. And the scariest part is that my sister, in reality, my sister doesn't know how to do it. She has a book that like shows her how to do it. Oh. She's like, but she really, Tell she's really secrets. into this stuff. She's barely learning, but it always works. It's so weird. Yeah, that is weird. Yeah. That that's she's probably like a witch, bro. She's starting to. <laughs> Tell bro, me why most, I said the same thing. Most girls are witches. Like, it's, I I believe in that stuff. <laughs> that ass. That's what used to be. That was what was around before, like the Christians came and. Mm. Killed off all the people that were into all that, that shit. Yeah, yeah. All the witch hunts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they would. Uh, Burn they would on stakes. Sometimes they would kill girls, and they wouldn't even be uh, witches. Yeah, they would just accuse them of it. But they would do some stupid things. If that box floats in the water in the river, yeah. if it floats, she's a witch. How the fuck is a box gonna float, bro? A lot of girls died because they just sank to the bottom. That was one of the witch trials. Oh, because they believe in God so much, huh? Like, yeah, God yeah. will make it. They'll be like, like this, this like, for example, they'll be like, this I believe in witch. God a lot, too, but the, the some people have, like, a darkness in them, bro, and they use yeah. God's name in vain. Yeah, a lot. I see that shit a lot. Like, yeah, that is sick. And the thing is, bro, is, like, after my journey, I like, the more I talk to people, I can see that it's not really them that are saying these things, bro. It's something speaking through them. Like something that's inside of them, like a uh-huh. like we all have darkness and light inside uh-huh. of us, right? right? That's balance. And some people are not balanced, and they're more darkness than light. So that that's what's speaking through them. Mm-hmm. Like God, I feel like sometimes God really speaks through me. Like when after my fight, like like it was it was a lot, man. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. That's good that you have like a good spiritual connection. I think I've, I think my spiritual connection. I think yours too. It's been growing a lot, and yeah. we've been doing really good. Bro, the world is really waking up now. Huh. If you look on even on the internet, all this stuff, angel numbers and stuff, like mm-hmm. people are just coming to that more. And I think, I think that the government and stuff, like they're mad at it. Mm. I mm-hmm. think I don't I don't think that's what they want to happen. So they kind of like they kind of manipulate. They're Stuff like, damn, the they internet. give these fuckers too much time in quarantine. They got smart with like us. They're learning. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> they're learning. Now crypto's yeah. out and shit. <laughs> so we got to flip the script. It's weird, bro. Why are they trying to make virtual realities? They're buying, they're buying, uh, like, fucking land on virtual reality. New ways to make money, bro. Mm-hmm. New, yeah, new ways to make money, bro. But, but it's, like, it's going to be a whole nother, like, corruption system, I feel. Like, have you heard of NFTs? I have, but I don't know what they are. Basically, it's a picture. Like, let's say um, I paint something, right? Mm-hmm. And I sell it as an NFT. Basically, that digital print is the original print of this picture. So, like, if I take a picture of a car, that's the original picture. If you buy it, that's the original. You can get other copies, yeah, but this is the original. Think of it like a painting. You can get a Mona Lisa, the original, mm-hmm. or you can get some copy of the... But it's more digital stuff. And people are like, well, you need to invest in this because it's going to be a digital thing. 
we're going into the digital world. Like, yeah, they're, bro, they're trying to shit on Mother Earth, bro. They said that like by 2025, everyone's going to have like a, uh, a digital asset. So they're going to have something owned digital. See, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Yeah. Dude, imagine later on like VRs, like the ga- the video games. Mm-hmm. And you're just there all day in the world, but not really in the world. It's yeah. Like fucking trappy. I feel like they tried to do that with corn. It's like they're stealing our spirits, bro. I think they, I feel like with quarantine they try to do that. I feel that's how I feel like they're stealing our spirits because we're not really living in God's world anymore. We're just they're really creating their own world, mm-hmm. and we're shit. it's godless. Who's Dude, the god if, of that? Right. If the world gets to the point where it's like weird to go out, think about that for a second. It's weird to go outside, and it's slowly getting like that. Like for me to go out, go out to like I don't know the mall or something. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't happen as often. Same with, like, everybody in my family unless they go to work. But, like, it's slowly getting like that. Exactly. That's Everyone's why when more comfortable I went, at home. When I went to, uh, when I was in Peru, bro, it's, like, a different world over there. You know how it is, bro. You've been to bro. Nigeria. But it they, definitely they was got, a different world. They got, they got TVs and stuff still over there, huh? Like here, here and there, yeah. We, I, we, yeah, we had our TV. Yeah, used to be it. on the phone and all that. You had to buy airtime for it. Bro, when I was in Peru, I was, I couldn't use the phone for two weeks. And it's like, I was just in the jungle mm-hmm. with people. And the people there are so nice, bro. It's so much <laughs> different. <laughs> bro. No, they're humble. They're yes, humble, bro. Humble. They're, they're... I mean, that's humble beginnings. Yeah. Feel me? Like, that, I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. the, that's, bro, literally, that's the, like, when people always say, like, came for the trenches, bro, or something, like, they don't. They're not. Nah, that's not the trenches, though. That's not trenches, thing. but, like. People put so much value on materialistic stuff, but in reality, if you came from the trenches, I think the trenches are like you're like you went through something bad emotionally. Mm. You know what I mean? So so you're saying like environmental and like emotional? Yeah, so like say you grew up in like an ugly area and then you also went through stuff emotionally. Cause there's some people that grow up poor but are so much happier than somebody who grows up rich who had like a fucked up family. Mm. You know what I some mean? Some celebrities' children are like like bitch, you're over here living a little kid's dream, and then there's some little kids that are happy playing with sticks and mud pies. That's what I'm saying. Hey, These people mind. are so are so happy, and they they don't have well well what we think we we're like oh they don't have anything, but in reality, bro, they don't they don't need nothing, bro. It's so all they, life. All they need is Surviving. love, unity, and that's it. That's mm-hmm. like such mm-hmm. a simple, beautiful life, bro. We like when you come when you come back to the United States, people are unhappy because they don't got a nice car. Like even myself, sometimes I fall victim to that, and then I think to myself, I'm like, bro, the speed limit all over the fucking United States is all the same. Even if I got a fast car, if I'm driving fast, I'm gonna get pulled over. Like I gotta drive just as fast as this slow ass car, then a nice ass fast car. Work hard, and then after that, you can relax for the rest of your life. You know? Yeah. Work hard and you can relax. Yeah. But the thing is, bro, what I see from you is like you have all this nice stuff, but look at you, bro. You take advantage of it. Oh, yeah, Like bro. you're making opportunities for yourself instead of sitting here. I wish I had this. And then just fucking sitting there just mad that and wishing shit. Yeah, you know no, what bro. I mean? Right. Like you, you're Maybe in here getting shit doing. done, bro. It's, then it that, like, that that's gratitude yeah you have gratitude. and i've been raised like a lot but like if you want something you got to work for it mm-hmm. At, when i was like when the ps3 barely came out bro i was selling chips and candy around my neighborhood hell yeah got, i got my fuck <laughs> <laughs> and i got my ps3 bro in high school too i was always selling chips and candy i'd come up with like 90 bucks a day wow bro chips and candy was was the move if you want to make a quick buck in, in school definitely chips and candy i sold all of it out Every That's day, awesome. I remember I, I, I used to sell Fagos. Then this fucker, I remember, bro. Remember me selling the fucking Fagos, bro? And then this Fagos. little bastard fucking learned where I, I got the Fagos. Started selling and they the started Fagos. jacking your shit. Like, Fuck, got my business to <laughs> Where did you get the Fagos from? I ain't gonna tell you that. No, I'm joking. It's uh, over off uh, Lincoln, right down the street, bro. Um, I've never tried store. a Fago, you know. That? Is it second Brewer? street? Hmm? The second street liquor store, the King's Market. I don't know. It's like right next to Subway. Oh, you said Lincoln. On Lincoln? Lincoln and 6th Street. Oh, right there by the Subway. Oh. Yeah. By the Subway and the Burger Basket. And if you go to the other spot, you go to Superior. Yeah, like yeah, right, yeah, yeah. And GameStop's around there. 
Oh, what the fuck? You know where, where you right? Live, you live by there? Yeah. So like by No, Florida you live high. over there. Or you live over there. I'm living in the area. I live in the birds, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Where, yeah. No, yeah, you be all over Corona, huh? Yeah, but nah, but yeah. I live up. The burbs. DBZ. <laughs> you play Apex? Uh, I don't play video games. Oh, shit. He's yeah. like, I fight people instead. I mean, <laughs> hey, I, I fight people too, bro. I'm on UFC. UFC Film. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. actually the champ at that too. Yeah? Yeah, bro. Matter of fact. Champ to champ. Bro, bro. Right, hey, <laughs> look at, look at. Bro, we, need, we need to run it. I want to run it with him. Oh, uh, I want to run it. In UFC or MMA? Hey, no takedowns though. No takedowns. Yeah. Oh, UFC. That's my weakness. Yeah. Wait, what do you have? PS4. He's a PS5. 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 Yeah. See, yeah. I don't even know about that shit, bro. I, I don't forgot know. there was a PS5. Yeah. You got my own little belly film. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, I'm gonna take that one too. You wanna take this one too? You go. You got. You got the game here. I don't got the game here. I don't even got another controller here. We're going to have to play one day, bro. Most I'm going to take that belt from you, bro. You're going to let him? Yeah, this is the only belt you're not going to get. Who, I guarantee you that. Who do you use? Anybody. Damn. Like, hey, talking you shit. Know, I'm, not, I'm not even talking shit, bro. You, uh, you know how uh, to wrestle in real life, bro, but in the game, bro, that's, that's, that's all, all you. Me. That's all me. I don't know, bro. I'll be playing with my cousin. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good? <laughs> yeah. A lot of people be saying they're pretty good. I'm just saying, bro. The thing is, I play on Xbox, though, so I'm going to have to learn the controls real quick. All the, the same. On the PS5. They're the same? Yeah. All right, cool. Actually, I have what my boy uh, Waleed's has. On, you, oh, on... you, you hang out with Waleed? Hell yeah, he around the corner from what? me, bro. That's the homie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a C talk? <laughs> cool. I think, I think this is a, a good question. If you were to fight somebody from the UFC, like right now, who would it be? Mm. Shit, nobody. They probably all beat no, me right now. No, like no, like in the okay, future. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. In the somebody future, you would want to fight. In the Ooh, yeah, someone you would want to retire. Uh, in the future, I really want to fight Khabib. Khabib. Yeah, but it's not gonna happen. Yeah, that would be a dream fight though. I don't even think he's coming back, bro. Two no, years. there's yeah. no way. He got Islam. He's fighting. He's fighting through legacy. He lives through legacy type shit. Hey, you should go visit his gym one day, low key. Islam, Islam, or oh, Khabib. AK. Yeah, with uh, what's his name? Daniel Cormier? Yeah. Bro, you know who would just follow me on Instagram? Uh, mm. Diego Sanchez. Oh, shit. Yeah. I'm My trying to... crazy. I'm trying Can to hype? go... I'm trying to go to... Uh, where is it? Where where John Jones trains? I forgot what the fuck I don't, I don't be knowing the I training know camps and shit. I just know John Jones trains there. Diego tra- Diego Sanchez trains there. My coach used to train there. Wait, John Jones trains there currently? He used to, but oh, okay. they kicked him out. Because I know he was... It's in New Mexico. Fuck, what is oh. it called? They kicked him out? Yeah, yeah, they kicked him out for all that hella shit. He did a lot of bad stuff. A lot of still. still. What? He's got demons in him, bro. Bro, D Muns, bro. Exclamation I mark. Never heard about this. What is it? You didn't see it on Instagram? Mm mm. He I like, didn't. all right, I'll tell you, bro. He like hit his wife. He, like, oh, hit his wife. Freaking ran over a drunk lady. Oh no, ran over a pregnant lady, bro, and dipped, bro. Like he did a lot of shit, but what he's a great this? fighter. Yeah, he's a great, he's a great fighter, fighter, which he I don't is. get, bro, because he's Pokes a terrible eyes out person. Too. <laughs> Imagine, oh yeah, he's like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I I be thinking sometimes. I'm like, like you know how Khabib is, like he's a great person and he's a great fighter, uh-huh. and then you got John Jones, who's like a piece of shit person but still a good fighter. It's like what goes into fighting that makes you actually good? Mm. Is it just technique, aggressiveness? Like, do you just have to have it? Like, so you're asking what makes the ultimate fighter in terms of like. So would you say that's subjective? Yeah. I mean, I don't think your personality has anything to do with, yeah, with you, you as fight, a fighter. You, fight. you can be a dig, you can, but as long as you're a good fighter, you're a good fighter. Hey, I think it's you as a person. Right. Cause you know that that's an art. You know what I'm saying? You don't judge yeah. the art artist. You judge the art. Uh, I like that. Yeah, I've been trying to figure that out. Thank you, bro. I've been trying to figure that out for like a couple of days. Like, what is it? What is it that goes into fighting? Do you got to be humble? Mm-hmm. But or look at Conor McGregor though. That he talks a lot of shit, but. What? For some reason, he's paying for it now. Right. What's um? Do you get into what's your inter- What's your definition of humble? Because I've been watching uh, Israel Adesanya, and he kind of like reaffirmed what my definition of humble was. Like type stuff. Humble. I think. I think humble is, is like thinking like nothing of yourself, not thinking that you're the best in the world, but also not thinking that you're the worst in the world. You're just humble. Right. You're just right. You're right in the middle. It's like a perfect balance. Like. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you might think you're fucking great. Sometimes you might think you're not so great, but like the way you act with people is always equal, mm-hmm. even. And always, I you think always that's humble. 
It, and it's the way I think that's the way people should be. Right. You, like you can accept the fact that you're really good. Just know there's always gonna be somebody better than you. I feel like a lot of people misunderstand the meaning of humbleness too. Because like say like someone's like obviously better or something, then what they would want that person to be humble, like their act of humbleness would be like, you know, not really like stoop down to that person, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But like kind of not accept the fact that they're better type shit, you know? Mm-hmm. That yeah. makes sense. What do you mean? Like <laughs> English, English. I wanna say it, bro. Yeah, we need to read more books. Hey, I do be reading, bro, but I'm just faded, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I really do be reading, though. Damn, bro, that's if you hit you that hard? No. No. I just can't speak, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this is everything. Fuck. We'll but give you a little Next bit. topic. Yeah. Next topic. It's all good. But yeah, you want to fight back. Khabib? Yeah, I would want to fight Khabib. Even Khabib, like, in Humble, like, you never hear him really talk shit until they talk shit. Yeah, it came suspects. back to me. Khabib's humble, right? Yeah. But if you see through Khabib, he knows who he's better than. You know, yeah. he'll say Justin Gaethje. I'll smash your you. boy. You know, I'll smash you. I'll smash you. But he knows that he's, he's a real, humble he's, person. He's, he's realistic. Yeah. yeah. Real, yeah. So, like, don't bullshit me, bro. I know I'm going to beat you. <laughs> right. I'm not even trying to talk shit. It's just, right. I know my level. I know your level. Yeah. So that's humble. Yeah, oh, that's I, think, humble. I think he's humble. I think he's confident. Confident. So there's, there's different variants and there's cocky. That's what they always say. Yeah. And there's arrogant. Mm-hmm. And arrogance, mm-hmm. what fucking Conor, it then? Conor McGregor is arrogant, mm-hmm. from what I from what I see and what I think. Yeah, yeah, because you feel you are at the top of the world, but right away that could be taken away. Most definitely, I see a lot of documentaries about him, like saying how he was at first um, humble, and then he grew up and got his money up and all that shit. Oh well, yeah, and that changed him. He became nah, the notorious think, Conor McGregor. No, nah, I think that's who I think. That's Maybe the money been. did get to his head, but I think that he's been that person. If you did look just back, the money helped him come out. Yeah, if you look, if you look back at his old videos, I was watching them not that long ago, and he was talking about how Jose Aldo or somebody has like a family, they have kids, they have love, they have support, and then in my head, I'm like, bro, you got parents that love you. Maybe they're not as supportive as you want them to be, but they for sure love you, right. and you got. A, a girl, his girlfriend's been with him like forever. His wife, she's Bro, been yeah. with him through everything. Yeah, he was he, a what a plumber or something first. Yeah, and she was like, you know what, you need to go train. I'll fucking work. She became basically like the man of the house while he trained. Dude, that's like opposite. that's a big responsibility. Yeah. Huge sacrifice. He's giving her her credit before, but when he said that, I'm like, where is the credit to your wife and to your oh. to your to your girlfriend and to your your parents? He never accredits them, even after fights? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. But I'm just talking about that one time he said that maybe he slipped up and kind of fucked up what he yeah, said. Yeah, some little pumps words. Or maybe I'm not understanding what he was saying, but just to me, I feel like I feel like he's been he's been that person mm-hmm. that he is now. That's just who he is. I feel like I feel like he probably isn't that bad of a person. I feel like um he did that as his role as the notorious you know conor mcgregor he has to be the bad guy the villain the cocky guy that just gets away whatever he wants yeah but that there's limits to that too and he passed it but yeah. like with the whole throwing the fucking what's it called the dolly the dolly at the bus. yeah that's yeah. too far that's crazy because like he did that all, all that for entertainment while he still has to become a like be a fighter you know what i'm saying so like yeah so yeah. i say how far does it go for entertainment you know what i'm saying for the individual that was good that you said that too though there's a difference in confidence and arrogance right yeah because so you can be confident go into something confidently but if you're no it's stupid you know you're gonna get in trouble i do it yeah arrogant will get you fucked up bro Arrog- yeah yeah, yeah arrogant basically that you, arrogance will get you look. fucked up hey he's been getting fucked up too dude he's been doing bad from floyd to khabib to poirier Everybody, bro, he hasn't won in years. Mm-mm. He's been going downhill. I mean, every realize... time he goes into those fights, he thinks he's gonna beat their ass. You know what I mean? He's 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 doubting them too much and like thinking of himself, thinking of himself highly too much. No, nah, bro, when he got the fight with Khabib, I was like, he's not gonna win it. Fuck. I'm not gonna a... lie, I wanted him to win. Me too. I wasn't a UFC watcher at that time, but. I watched that at the UFC gym that was right here in Main Street. Oh, yeah. Oh. They used to host the fights. I yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I was to you there, too. I just realized that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. You'd be wrestling in the octagon with Jesus and stuff. Yeah. 
I remember that. Oh, yeah, I remember y'all would put that on your stories and shit. I think what? y'all would um, wrestle. Oh, wrestling wrestle. each other? Yeah. We used to take some cool videos. Jesus was my training partner. Like, he was my partner in wrestling practices. You used to train with him? Nah. No? No. Why not? He don't train. Fuck again, back in it. I tried, bro. He doesn't want to? Nah, he don't want to. I don't know why. He's good. He could have done. He could have done something in college and stuff. But me too. You know what I mean. I didn't wrestle in college either. Mm-hmm. Hey, but Olympics is hard to get to though. You know. Yeah, the Olympics. It's not a for sure thing. You know. In for college? me, bro, the Olympics is like the highest level of, of winning competition. of yeah, competition. A, yeah, that's international comp, bro. You did the um, what's it called? You for you competed for the U.S. No. Oh yeah. For. So, I competed for a federation that's trying to make MMA an Olympic sport. So it was like the MMA kind of like Olympics. It was pretty fun. Mm-hmm. That would be pretty dope. I need to see that. What I, was I the won. thing called? MMA though? and uh... it was called it's called pancreation. Pancreation. Like what yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. What I did was called pancreation. It's kind of like it's kind of like what Khabib did, bro. It's like Sambu, mm. but it's just a little bit different. It's like the American version. Okay. And I I won the national belt. And then I also won the, the worlds. I won worlds too. Yeah, I remember when you fought. I searched it up, and I think it said like it was the first uh, MMA like made or some shit like that, like one of the first ones. Yeah, I was first part of. Arts. I was part of that. It was crazy. That's it was cool. a cool experience. I went to Portugal. No, it was two you years went to ago. Portugal? Yeah, November November thirteenth, two thousand nineteen. Cool. Yeah. So was it like uh, fighting internationally though? It's like crazy, bro. It's really crazy meeting people from from other countries and and learning different cultures. I think it's amazing because I think I think we're all the same, bro. As humans, we're all the same. But the only thing that makes things different is our culture, right? Our cultures. And if if we could share our cultures with other ethnicities, bro, like how united is that, dude? No, and people at the same time they thought my tattoo was stupid, but it says the art. It says art is the solution to chaos. And I think for that, it really stuck with me because I'm like, yeah, it really is. Like, yeah. even it's like, well, what about wars? There's been some letters, music, art that has stopped or lessened the war. Oh, you know true. what I mean? Yeah. And something that goes down in history, something important. And I think me as an artist, like as of everything that I do, I think it really stuck with me. And what you said reminded me of that. Hmm. Fuck are we talking about? <laughs> War. war war i i think i think war, war i think for me bro i think war is like a it's a terrible thing but at the same time it can be very beautiful that's what i think like the balance of the world we live in is so beautiful mm-hmm. like it's so fucking beautiful like the worst thing can happen to you and you can make that the best thing that ever happened to you because it gave you all this motivation to accomplish big things and to be the better version of yourself like you might put yourself in a bad situation because you're depressed or something, and then out of that bad situation you learn from it and you grow, and then you grow. Mm-hmm. So I think the the dynamic that we live in in this planet, I think it's beautiful. All right, it's and like we live in heaven, bro. This is literally heaven. You just gotta make it your heaven. Yeah, you 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 gotta be mentally strong. You can't be weak. We you can't fall. You can't fall victim to the fucking weak ass shit that comes into our lives that that tries to break us mentally. That shit is weak, bro. Mm-hmm. Right. It's weak. I just talked to my dad literally before you came, and I was saying that I should I want to like paint or something like the, a scale for balance. Mm-hmm. And I was like, because I feel balance is super equal, and I've been like trying to balance my life around too. Yeah. And it and like if you think about it, going back to the cultures thing you said. Every culture has balance. Like, you know, we have the skill. We have, like, there's the whole astrology thing. Same thing. Libra, balance. Mm. Or um, the yin and the yang. Yeah. yeah. Negativity and the positivity are always in balance. Yes. And, and that's the thing, bro, is that you need to find that balance because first comes darkness, then comes light. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Without, without, you can't see without the light, light the darkness. I mean, without darkness, there is no light. Mm-hmm. And if it's just, light then there is it's nothing mm-hmm. right you know what i mean you so, need the darkness and you need the light to make yeah. a full picture and i i said that to somebody and then they're they said oh uh, darkness is the absence of light 
And then I'm thinking, I'm like, what about around? <laughs> like the light, the I light mean, ain't gonna like like these lights. They're not lighting up the whole room. Uh-huh. Like there's gonna be darkness somewhere. Oh, okay, yeah. You know what I'm saying? What that's that's just how I think of it. And I th- I really believe that that without darkness there is no light, and without light there is no darkness. I think it's a I think it's equal. It's a equal parallel. Yeah, it's balance. Yeah. And that, thing should be. that's all because of Adam and Eve, bro. Mm-hmm. They fucking bit the apple, and then they <laughs> made us. They made us like God. That's basically what they did. Gods of our own world, and we're fucking it up. No, they made us like God because we know both good and evil. Mm-hmm. Do you think people are raised evil, or born to be evil? Born evil. Born raised, or no? I don't think so, bro. I think well, what I think is, I think people choose to be evil. They choose to be evil. Yeah. You feel... And you... it could be consciously or unconsciously. Hmm. And the people that are unconscious, they need to come to... That's what ayahuasca is for, bro. Mm. To raise the consciousness, awareness. Yeah, that stuff out. yeah it's, it's to raise your consciousness, bro, so you can be more aware of yourself, what you're doing to yourself and to others. Because mm-hmm. if, if you can't take care of yourself, bro, you cannot take... You cannot care for somebody else. Yeah. How do you think, how do, after going to Peru and like doing all of those things, how do you think your life has changed? Tremendously, bro. Tremendously? <sighs> Trips like that most definitely are, are yeah. life changing. It, it was really life changing. And I think that I'm only, I'm go, I'm only going to continue to get smarter, continue to get better. Continue and I'm, and there's no way in heaven that anything is going to stop me from, from reaching my goals and reaching my dreams. Nothing, bro. This this is unbreakable. It's unbreakable. Mm-hmm. And that's and like even when I text you like through like DM on Instagram, I tell you like, hey, bro, like I got you. I'm I'm like here throughout like your progress. I know I'm growing myself up, and I know like you're growing yourself up. Too. Yeah. So I like seeing is. I like seeing people who are like working and right. like wanting to see themselves in a better place. Likewise, bro. And I I like seeing your stuff, bro, because you're so joyful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're very joyful, and and it's hard for me to be like that. I'm like a more a more uh, quiet, a more reserved, like, reserved, reserved. Yeah. yeah, reserved. I was about to say sensitive. Like, <laughs> That's crying on us. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm I'm more yeah, like just reserved, uh-huh. fucking quiet, calm. I don't know how to say it, but yeah, man, I'm not. I like to work hard. That's mm-hmm. really what I like to do. I just I'm a very like hardworking person. Very fucking serious. That's the word. Mm-hmm. I'm real serious, yeah, and I need. I feel like I need to be around more people who are joyful and see life in a different way. Cause I see life as work hard and fucking love and just mm-hmm. work hard. That's how I see it. I think. Hey, oh. It's, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was watching this um this one video on Vic Blends, and he was like, he was talking to this dude, and he was like 42 years old or something. And he was just this OG telling him like you gotta, you gotta enjoy life as it goes type stuff. You know, mm-hmm. I I like that a lot, but I also fucking love stoicism or stoic stoic however you say it, like like Marcus Aurelius those guys. Explain stoic. But I think so me, stoic is like like basically it's having no emotions. Mm. It's being stoic. That's what stoic means. Like sure, just showing no emotion. Yeah, like not giving people praise, mm-hmm. like just being like, oh, you're like you're doing what you're supposed to. Mm-hmm. Like even if you're doing good, they they wouldn't say that you're doing good. You're doing what you're supposed to. Yeah, there's no there's no praise. There's none of that, mm-hmm. and there's there's no room for for softness. Like, oh, I feel sad today, or oh, I'm tired. I'm gonna go to sleep. Those motherfuckers when they get tired, they work harder, and then they sleep on the floor. They don't. They don't have the comfort of sleeping on a bed. Mm-hmm. Like they're just stoic. They're, they're fucking hard. They're hard men. Like we, like Campbell, bro. Mm. Campbell's Campbell a hard is man. A stoic man. That's a hard man right there, bro. Randy Campbell, Coach Campbell, Centennial Wrestling Coach. Shout out. I'm, I'm honestly Shout mad I wasn't man. able to like continue that shit, bro. Yeah, but it's different. It's definitely different. I wish I could have played football too, bro. Bro, there's a there's a lot of things like. Cause I feel, I don't know. Wrestling is a lot. I, I felt like more, I like I liked wrestling a lot more, and I felt like yeah. I, you know what I mean. How long have you been wrestling for? 
I started wrestling my freshman year. Oh shit! Cool. Yeah. And then, Damn, you got that good. Yeah. Oh, well, I did jujitsu before. Okay. For three years at the UFC gym on McKinley, mm -hmm. and then from there I went into wrestling. But I was fighting at the time when I was. I started fighting when I was ten, bro. Like the first week of I started training, I I signed myself up for a fight. Damn. And my first mom. Week? Yeah, and then I went to my mom. I was like, Mom, you have to pay $30 to the gym because <laughs> I signed myself up for a fight. She was like, what? She was like, you did what? And then I was like, please. I was like, it's going to be okay. And then, yeah. I, bro, I went in there, fucking took the kid down, took his back, choked him in like 10 seconds. Really? Yeah, that was my first fight. Man, I wish I could do this shit. I don't think I could. I, I feel like I would give it a shot, but I know I would probably get hurt. Bro, you can still do it. Bro was in his mar own martial arts tournament. Oh, actually. My dad, so my dad, remember I told you my dad used to be a wrestling, like a wrestler? Yeah. Do you know um Paul Herrera? Yeah, I used to train with him. Did my dad, his his brother, Joe, he's, uh, used to be my dad's coach. Oh, really? And my dad like, just started talking again to uh, Joe because he's working with him. Yeah. And he's like, um, he has this friend, he's an MMA like fighter. I forgot his name, something, um, something dog, I forgot what it's called. I, got, I forgot his name. But he's, he's, a, like, he's an MMA fighter? Yeah. Is it Rampage? I don't know. Rampage Jackson? No, it's not Rampage Jackson. Nah. But yeah, um, so he was like, you should come train. He's like, I know. He's like, nah, bro, I'm not in shape, this and that, this and that. He's like, I know you're not, but I saw what you used to do. My dad used to do pretty good in high yeah. school. He got like, uh, he got he showed him like all his medals and stuff. Yeah. Uh, he used to be yeah. in shape, bro. I'll just talk cool. to him right now after the podcast, too. So he, I know he wants to talk to you, too. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to wrestle him, bro. Huh? Try to wrestle him. Oh, my dad? <laughs> no, I'm my not, dad's out of shape right now. Him. I'm in his house and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, my dad's out of shape right now. But my dad, but basically, they told him, like, I know you used to be a good wrestler and this and that. I know your potential. You can do this. You're so, you're old. You're older now, but you're not too old to stop. How old is your dad? My dad's... Or he, my dad's not going to do this, like, professionally, I don't think. But he's going to train again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad is 40. 41. 40. 41. I think he's 40. 40 he had you young. Huh? He had you yeah, young. yeah, he was. They were my well, mom and dad were both twenty. Before. He made you young. <laughs> yeah, they made, made me at nineteen, you. and they had me at twenty. Wow. Yeah, uh, my mom was nineteen when she had me. Oh, really? Yeah, she was nineteen. So your mom's probably like the same age as like my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. She's Dang. thirty, thirty-nine. Yeah, I'm twenty. She's thirty-nine. Dang, that's crazy. But yeah, my dad might get back, get back into training too. Bro, he should. Well, he's gonna train with uh, one of the Herrera brothers. No, 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 no. It's there's um. A, there's a gym in Corona right here with Batiste Mansuri. It's a uh, CJJF, CJJF, and also a, another coach. The jujitsu coach there is really good. There's two. There's this um, white lady, and then there's also this Hispanic man. I forgot his name, bro. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then and then they have Batiste Mansuri. That he's a the coach there. He used to coach me when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. He helped me a lot, bro. You should train there too, bro. It's it's on Second Street, oh no, it's on Fourth Street. You ever heard of Peerless? Peerless, yeah, Peerless yeah. too. I was there for a little bit. Have you heard of Empire? Yeah, that's where I used to train when you I was a kid. Used to train at Empire. When I was when I was like ten. Shit. That was Paul Herrera's gym. Yeah, yeah, I used to go there when I was like four to like seven. Bro, you know who used to train there? Aaron Pico. Aaron Pico, I don't know who that yeah. is. He's a, he wrestled. He won state like twice, and then they took him out of high school, and then he went to wrestle for the Olympics. Oh shit! And then he didn't make it though; he, like he quit pretty early. And then he just he signed with Bellator when he was in high school though. Uh -huh. Damn. Like he had a contract with Bellator. Jeez. When he was in high school. Fuck, bro! Wow. He was going up against them at high school. No, 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 no. But he, but he just he, had the he contract. He wasn't going against them, but he was already signed. Like oh. when you turn eighteen, like you can start making money already. Cause he he had a he had a big name in wrestling. So let's talk about your fight. Did you did, at any point, bro? Did you, did it feel like he got you or something? You're like, oh, you motherfucker, that hurt. No, no, I mean, you didn't it, look like oh, it. It wasn't. Well, when I the first takedown that I got, he accidentally kneed me in my nose. Like yeah. when I was on top of him, he picked his leg up like this, like to try to I don't know, try to submit uh -huh. me, and his his knee hit my nose. That was it. That was the only time I got hit. Can you yeah. see it? No, bro. The first, like, literally, as I, I didn't get hit at you all. Barely you barely You didn't. You didn't get hit, bro. Uh, 
as the fight started, I saw you going for the takedown, just dominate the entire thing, just wrestling to the ground. Yeah. And I was like, this was not getting hurt. <laughs> He's not getting hit. Yeah. And we're just looking like, holy shit. Bro, I saw the jiu-jitsu background. You could beat him, bro. Yeah, in all my in all my fights, bro, I haven't got touched. No. I haven't got hit. I haven't got like You I, haven't. I, you're I probably, right, you haven't. I probably got hit maybe like five times. Jeez. In, in like four five fights in five fights. What's something you think you could have worked on? Improve on? I think just it's it's just I'm I'm still figuring out my body, how to make how to how to how to keep my strength throughout the whole fight. Mm-hmm. Like not my muscles can't get tired. So more endurance stuff? Yeah, more more strength and conditioning, yeah. What I, need, up? I need more muscle endurance. That's what I need. Cause wrestling for that short amount of time and going for that Kimura, I was holding it, trying to that. pull his arm and all this and that and, and you my, tired my muscles got tired. It was just like it's like juice in your fucking the arms. Lactic acid. Yeah. Yeah, lactic mm-hmm. acid. And then when I'm in there and then I'm punching in the second round, my arms felt so, so heavy, heavy. Mm. Yeah. like so heavy. Like usually I punch a lot faster. So I was like, fuck, like I can't even punch with my right arm because I was just holding his, his wrist this whole time. So yeah, it's really figuring out how to, how to keep my muscle endurance the entire fight. And I think if I, once I figure that out, you're going to be able to see the best version of Tony. Mm-hmm. The, what, what, the things that I do in the gym are so much different than what I'm doing in the fights. Mm-hmm. And it's like I'm I gotta learn how to how to really bring that that Tony out into the fight. Mm-hmm. I think you need to be more I, I told you you need to be more of an animal. Yeah. Like you need to fucking like no, I'm a fucking animal bro but it's I know you are but I was like you need to bring animal. that out. Yeah. Yeah you gotta control it. Calculated and, animal instinct. So like I think that's my talent though bro. Right. Yeah. Is that I I know how to win fights. Yeah. And I and I've learned that about myself. Like, I can be tired as fuck. But you'll pull through it. But I know how to win fights. Do like, you think you could be a gladiator, a gladiator? From like, like let's just say we were in the Roman era. Do you think you could be a gladiator? I feel like if yeah. we were a gladiator, yeah. bro. Like, back then, I feel like we would have met. Like, but now, we wouldn't meet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what? Back then, we would have met. Like, I would have been like a gladiator back then, bro. But now, uh, I ain't no gladiator. I would have no. fucking ate your throat. <laughs> <laughs> Ate your throat. <laughs> what the fuck? That's what I'm now, bro. You just... <laughs> <laughs> bro, he, he literally means fucking eat. Yeah. Fuck. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? No, fuck yeah. You just like that. <laughs> Have you seen the movie Gladiator? No, I need to watch it. Nah, bro. That's just it. straight mental, bro. Yeah, that's Maximus, huh? Maximus. Maximus. Yeah. That's my coach's son's name. He named him after that, that movie. Yeah. That's a sick ass name, Maximus. What's it called? In high school, my graphic design teacher, Mr. Wo- Coach Woods, mm. he um he named his two dogs Maximus and Leonidas. Leonidas oh, is from uh, Spartans. I'll beat the shit out of his dogs. <laughs> <laughs> they're little ass dogs, bro. <laughs> hey, they're little yeah, you, know Mike, you know Mike Tyson wanted to uh fight a, a silverback gorilla, bro? He's weird. You think he would have won? No, <laughs> bro. He would have got eaten, bro. Yeah, bro. That gorilla would have... Bro, a smack from the gorilla? Hey, imagine he just he weave, came, he weave. Came, hey. <laughs> <laughs> peekaboo style. Give him just the signature punch. Right I'm Mike Tyson. <laughs> Mike Tyson. Yeah, let me put, That's put right, me against bitch. that gorilla. I want, I want to be, be a best friend. <laughs> that gorilla's my bitch. <laughs> bro, bro, for some reason, bro, I have like a lot of respect for Mike Tyson. But oh, at the same, same, time, yeah, same At the same time, I wish I was alive like at his time so I could have fucked him up. Mm-hmm. Like it's like I'm in I know like, what you mean. I'm in like a competition with Mike Tyson in my own head. Mm-hmm. He don't even know of my existence. Mm-hmm. But I'm really in a oh, competition. Like, <laughs> Little does he know, bro. Imagine he watches this one day. He's like, motherfucker, bro. I'm for sure. Gonna, <laughs> I'm for sure. Gonna hey, meet get him on the hot box, bro. I can see you on the on his on his uh thing. Yeah, I'll get on his hot boxing, but I don't know. I I I got a lot of respect for him, but it's like. I want to be better than Mike Tyson. <laughs> like I want more people to know who I am than. And that's good. Who they know have that Mike goal. Tyson is. Just gotta work for it, bro. But he's also he's also my favorite person, bro. That's the thing. Bro, he's, he's funny as he's shit. He's mine bro. too, bro. I, I definitely want to meet him in yeah. my lifetime. Smoke sesh with Mike Tyson one day, bro. There's a lot of people I want to smoke with, bro. I got. They it. know me too. Mike Tyson, Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Seth Rogen. 
Nah, not Seth Rogen. I Joe wanna, Rogan. I want to smoke. Joe, Joe Rogan. Rogan would be cool. Bro, Joe Rogan, I think I'd have a good conversation I with I feel him. like he's, he's way smarter than me, but I think it would be yeah. helpful. He, I like that, though. That he's wise. Right. Yeah. I want to be around like, people More wise smarter. people, bro. You yeah. are, like, what is that? Something. What about that, that thing about the fruit basket? Like. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's <laughs> like the. Saying? Yeah, it's like those sayings when you're saying like if you put yourself in the right fruit basket or something, you become like the fruit. Or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you put yourself in a rotting fruit basket, you become rotten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you put yourself in a healthy one, then you become healthy. So yeah. Your product of your environment type shit. Yeah. Exactly. You're the product of your me, environment. I told you it'll come back. <laughs> it'll come so back. So that's like so like the people that I'm around now, like my coach, like bro, he fought for the belt, but he had his own demons that he had to get through mm-hmm. and and also my other coach Luis he fucking went through his stuff he's still going through his stuff but it's like I can learn from them because they've already been there done that they've they're they're in it they're still going through it sometimes maybe but it's like I can look at them and learn from them and also listen to what they tell me mm-hmm. and really learn from them because they know what they're talking about all right so, yeah you're your sen- well, almost a sensei, but your yeah, your coach is like the, what's it called? Like the one you got to look up to the most, you know? Yeah. You're basically in his hands when you're in the fight. You got to trust I, him. I really look up to my coach Joe the most out of all my coaches. That's good. He's just like he doesn't cuss. He doesn't it's respectful. He's respect. so respectful, so humble, so fucking cool. Like I look up to my coach Joe a lot. And when I first got to the gym, bro, I was a piece of shit like person. Uh-huh. Like, just, like, literally, bro, like, the shit on the floor, like, that was me. And training there, learning from him. He always, he's not, I'm good at fighting, right? Uh-huh. And when I come around some people, they just feed my ego. And they're like, oh, yeah, Tony this, Tony that. But when I'm around my coach, bro, he always sets me straight. He tells me everything straight the fuck up. Just like my mom. Like, these, these people are real people around me. Like, mm-hmm. they're not... I'm not around people who are just like, oh, Tony's going to do something great one day. So let's fucking be nice to him. Mm-hmm. And let's just, you're always right. You're always, they're not, like, mm-hmm. the people around me are not yes men. Even Coach Luis, my Coach Luis, like, tells me everything straight up. Before my fight. That's what's supposed to be, bro. I'd rather have, have yes it straight around. up, too. Right. Yeah. If my shit's ass, if my art's ass, bro, and, like, people are gassing me, saying it's freaking amazing, I'm going to be mad as shit in the long run. Yeah. Yeah, this is hurt. It's hurtful. Right, truth hurts, but shit. <laughs> yeah, the truth hurts, bro. But it, if anything, it makes you better. Yeah, it definitely makes you, makes you better. better. Start and telling, gotta start telling the that's truth. That's what man. I've what I've learned to be. Bro, after my fight, like you know how I gave my mom my belt and I and I told her that I couldn't do it without her. Mm-hmm. So I I went to go party, bro, and I was with my friends Clemente, Marvin, and my homie Elijah. And we were drinking, and I took some fucking mushrooms. Mm. And somebody said something that I didn't like. Uh-huh. But I was like, oh, I'm not going to say anything. Like, they're just my friends. And then it hit me like, boom. Mm. And then I was like, fuck. Like, sometimes I get mad at my family. Uh-huh. And I treat them, like, not as well as I treat people who are, who are, strangers. like, strangers. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. sometimes I treat strangers better, better than, your than I treat my own family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it really hit me, and it's like, my family, bro, they don't have to be there for me. Yeah, they exactly. don't have to do anything mm-hmm. at all. They, they really don't have to do shit. Like, they're my family, but but what really makes them, like, the, the great people around me is the loyalty that my family has, and mm-hmm. I'm so grateful for them because I've been... For so long, bro, I was I was a real bad person, real like ungrateful person. Mm-hmm. And now I had it planned the whole time before my fight that I was gonna give the belt to my mom. I told a bunch of people. I think I told you. Yeah, you said you're gonna be the belt here. No, I I told I think I told you that I was gonna give the belt to my mom. And I, I don't think so. Oh no, I probably said it to somebody else. You just said you told me that you were gonna bring the belt here. I was like, this one is gonna win. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I told everybody that I was gonna give the belt to my mom. It's like uh-huh. it's it's like the, it's like a divine thing that happened. Like I gave the belt to my mom. After that, I realized that I treat strangers better than I treat my parent sometimes, cause I cause I'm so comfortable with my mom. Right. And then now I'm like, 
you kind like, of forget I, I, the gratitude. I, I, yeah, I forgot to have gratitude, and I'm like, and I forgot to all, also think that they don't have to be there. They don't have to do anything yeah. for me. I get you. No, and it happens. Don't worry. Like it happens. You know. Yeah. Like I know sometimes you're like, oh, I'm busy. Or, no, I'm fine with it, bro. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Like it sucks that I went through that, but mm -hmm. I. Think, but you go from it. Yeah, learned. yeah. I learned from it, and like now I can be like a blessing to my family and to my mom, and not be just a fucking taker. Mm -hmm. Right. And be selfish, but always. I uh, even now when I'm with my mom, I'm thinking, all right, how would I talk to her? Like Loki, I think this. How would I talk to her if she was like just a a white lady, like in her house, like <laughs> just feeding me, like somebody I don't know? Because you uh -huh. would be so respectful, right? I mean, I get around white people, bro. I, I'm like, I turn super respectful for some reason. I was like that at first. I'm not gonna lie, and then I was like, I kind of just like dialed back. I, I become more yourself, you like know, like teacher, authentic, you know. I think it's because the teachers, bro. Most of my teachers been like white older ladies, and like I've always had to have respect for them. Ask my mom, I'm gonna get home, my mom's gonna fuck me up. Yeah. So it's just it's already like a thing in my head. But yeah, like, and my dad wasn't around, bro. Like when I was a kid, so I would act bad, and my mom had to be my dad. She had to fuck me up. <laughs> and then I get I got older, and she stopped hitting me, like, cause I don't know, maybe she's tired of. Fucking that, me up already. But that says that the reason he stopped hitting us is because he's like, you know what? I'm not going to hit him no more. If they're going to learn the consequences, they're going to have to learn through another way. She probably thought that too, but it's like... It's all parents. I, I, got yeah, older. I feel like every parent just goes through that real life. I feel this like is, we'll understand more when we're parents too, you know? I'm this starting is, to understand it more in my back. Yeah, yeah. yeah go this, ahead. Is, this is how bad I was, bro. I got bigger. I got stronger. And I, and I started thinking, oh, I'm the big dog now. Like, mm. And then... I started being disrespectful to my mom because I didn't have anybody that was around me to fuck me up. Yeah, yeah And my yeah. mom, like, she would hit me, bro, but I would dodge a lot of her shit. Weave. I started, <laughs> I started, I started, I started getting good at fighting. That's why like, you got good at fighting, bro. Your yeah. mom trained your ass. <laughs> bro, my head movement was slick, bro. She was swinging the fucking belt at me. I'd be like, it would be like, Matrix and like, shit. Missing and shit. I'd be like, all right, she's going to swing. I already got her fucking Link. combinations down. Like, tss, tss. Hey, not going to lie. I know I bring up Michael Jackson a lot. But you know that's how he got good at dancing type shit? Like, his dad would beat the shit out of him. And then he started learning how to. He was just like, weave, 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 weave. That's ignorant. I, I believe <laughs> that. No, but yeah, the what really, what really changed my mind, bro. What changed, was What is changing everything is my ayahuasca ceremony. Yeah? Yeah. And I did I did five five cups. Damn, five cups, bro. I went in deep, like real deep. Was that your first time? Yeah, that was my first time. You went can, five cups? Sheesh. Can you make Full that set. here or just over there? Nah, it's, it's illegal over here, bro. They don't want us to be conscious. They don't want us, they don't to, want be us to be that. Look how conscious we got in quarantine, bro. They don't want that. Fuck that. They don't, they no, don't. bro. Quarantine fucked a lot of people up too, though. I'm not going to lie. Mentally. I'm not, yeah, but yeah. I'm, not, I'm not going to lie. Anxiety it, 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 and it, it, depression it, went up a lot. It's the balance, bro. Just mm -hmm. like we were talking about. Some people got fucked up. Some people learned and got better. Yep. But people are saying that there might be another one. Who knows? Man. But it's like, but I feel like now that we know what to do with the quarantine, all those missed opportunities and all those mistakes that we made, now the second time around, we know what to do. And yeah. we've learned from those mistakes, like we said. I really want people to unite, bro. That's why yeah. if I if I can have a platform in front of a lot of people and people, you know, respect me like I respect them, then I would want to help everybody unite and come together and stop being so like so much of individuals and being selfish. Mm -hmm. And if, if we unite and we come together, bro, we can we can really become our own bosses, mm -hmm. not not like how it is now where the government controls everything and the people with power and money mm. are the ones in control. We got to build each other up. Yeah. We got to, we got to like escape that world, that fucked up world. And then go into a different vibration where we're just vibrating on a different frequency in the same planet where we can't even be manipulated or touched by those people. Cause they're just under that a lower frequency. Damn, bro, my sister missed out on a good conversation. She most definitely did. She would. She really did. No, my sister would have had you talking, talking the entire time. The entire, bro. Uh, you would have just. She, no, she was supposed to be here too, but her friend came. They were supposed to, now they're going somewhere. Well, she she was really excited. She told me to tell you congratulations too. Oh, thanks. Well, one day, bro. One day I'll come back and we'll talk again after I win this other belt. Yeah. Hey, she would have had you on here three hours, bro, talking about this shit, and we yeah. would have listened because yeah. it's just interesting. 
It's like, interesting, right? It, it's like you choose not to believe in this whole spiritual stuff because you know how is this supposed it's to too much? To it's like a whole other. But nother... when you do it and you actually look into it, it connects so well, and you're like, "There's no other thing to believe." Right. Yeah, it's because everything we learn, bro, it, it's all manipulated by people who just are benefiting themselves. Yeah. And not benefiting the the pop the whole population. Mm-hmm. And it, it's it's a terrible thing, bro. How I feel like church has even been manipulated by oh, people. Oh, yeah, definitely bro. Definitely manipulate what? Yes. Oh, and yeah. and some churches are fucking great. Sorry, excuse my language, but yeah, some church because... some churches are great. And then there's also some churches that are manipulated with and people that are manipulated with and yeah. people that are very judgmental and, and oh there's some evil people at churches too yeah they're super yeah. judgmental or they're like you can't sit with us you don't do this or you don't believe this and it's like i don't think that's what god would want like, if god loves all of us how come he doesn't like you 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 yeah you, you know what i mean right. like no everyone has to come as one communion yeah and everybody needs to love each other and treat Treat everybody else like how they wish they could be treated. It was yeah. one of like the basic rules since we were babies, you know, treat others the way you want to be treated. People yeah. forget about that now. But some people want to be treated bad, bro, because they think so low of themselves. But they're not conscious and they're not aware of it. So they're doing, they're treating other people bad. And then when they get treated bad, they're like, oh, why me? Why me? Why did this happen to me? Mm-hmm. But it's you. Yeah. You need to change yourself. It's not, it's, there's nothing, bro, outside of yourself that can affect you. Mm-hmm. It's all here. It's all in your heart. It's all in your mind and your spirit. Mm-hmm. The, the, that's the only thing that, that's what you control. Everything outside you don't control. And once we, once we tap it, once all of us tap into our power that is in, inside of us, then, bro, we're going to be gods. We're going to be, we're going we're gonna to be what God made us to be. And once we tap into our power, bro, that's what's going to happen. That's when we make this world our kingdom. Yes. And we will reign over this planet as kings. And and we won't be fucking manipulated by these motherfuckers making virtual realities. <laughs> trying to fucking steal our spirits, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and I know it's like a cool idea, but you don't want to get rid of the simple beauties in life, you know? Yeah, no. that that I think... That's what I think about, like, the virtual reality stuff. Like, yeah, it could be cool, but you have to find the right balance mm-hmm. with things. And, and that's can, something we don't know how to do, balance. A, yeah, a lot of people don't know how to do that. But mm-hmm. once once people start finding the right balance in their own lives, in their own way, dude, it's going to be such an awesome, beautiful world. And that's I can't. Hopefully, I get to experience that, bro. But if I could do anything, bro, it'd be to help the world become that how it's like my dream how do you, how do you think find... would be a way to do that the what i'm doing right now just talking about it spreading awareness yeah spreading awareness and and being that person mm-hmm. being being what i want to see in other people i think that's what's really gonna change a lot of things mm-hmm. that's cool that's good very good being the change that i wish that i want to see that's what i have to do and that's what i want to do and that's what i'm going to do mm-hmm like you've already learned um, all your mistakes, all your this and that, this and that. You've grown yeah. as a person. And I can see it too. Yeah, I can definitely see that, especially like through the martial arts and all that shit. Like it just, it balances you out, you know? Yeah, it, you, it does. It no, even in martial arts. Like a lot of people think of it, martial arts is a violent thing as like, oh, they're hitting each other, they're fighting each other. But in reality, if you really think about it, martial arts was all based around respect. At the yeah. beginning, you bow respect respect for yourself and respect for others because if you're a martial artist Uh you're not you're not smoking the the bad things that are gonna fuck your lungs up you're not eating bad you're not drinking the bad stuff you're 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 disciplined but you're also loving yourself because you're not you're not killing your body You're, you're you're really like taking care of your body fucking nurturing yourself like loving yourself and but at the same time, there's a balance because you go in there and you fight and you're trying to fuck somebody up and you might hurt yourself in between. But once you get out of there, then you go back to the months of taking care of yourself and stuff. And yeah, you're training. You might get hurt in training. But I've learned before, bro, when I would get hurt, I would not ice myself mm. and I wouldn't I wouldn't take care of myself. I'd be like, nah, fuck that. I ain't weak. Like that's Dan, weak. So that was a sign of weakness for you at the time? 
Yeah, that was a sign of weakness for me. And it's the elements, bro. The elements are we're gonna heal you. And then I learned I learned <laughs> about that that men and women, we all have a feminine and a masculine energy. Yeah. Men have the masculine energy more and and women have the feminine one more, but we both have both. The serotonin so, and the testosterone. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta you gotta mother yourself and father yourself. Yep. So us as men, we have to work hard, but we also have to learn how to take care of our bodies and and nurture ourselves because who the fuck's gonna do it for us exactly You're, and that's something that's not taught by a lot of people but yeah. like a lot of parents aren't teaching their sons how to right. clean their face how to take care of their face how to cut their you know like be maintained as a person and keep your body whole right. how to yeah. eat good how to cook for yourself stuff like that it's because those parents weren't raised that way either mm -hmm. so that's why our generation bro gotta teach up. yourself we're gonna change everything everything bro Especially Especially being being so no, aware of it. And look at the generations after us too, dude. If that's why our generation is gonna change that generation. Mm -hmm. We all gotta heal ourselves so that we have babies that are born without traumas that are passed through us spiritually. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You said think... you'd be into reading, right? Yeah. You ever read this uh one book called uh, The Way of Superior Man? It talks no, about I, all I that shit, bro. It. It sounds good. I'm gonna definitely uh, send, send you the audio file, but that shit. Oh, yeah. you, told you exactly what you just said, like having the masculine and feminine essence and all that shit, bro. Mm -hmm. You definitely need that that balance, bro. So yeah, you gotta be a loving man, yet a uh, yet a uh, a stern man, mm -hmm. and a, and affirm yourself, and you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Ronel was saying that everybody has that shit too. Like every, like even women got the masculine uh, essence, and then vice the, versa, and all yeah, that shit. Like for example, for women, it's like you can't always be fragile. So right. you gotta toughen up and suck it up and work with it. That's how my mom is, bro. Mm -hmm. No, always... and I saw that, dude. I know if I was in the ring like that, my mom would be. Fl I wouldn't be in the ring. <laughs> my mom would have been like, "Get the fuck out! You're you're tripping if you think you're gonna go in the ring." You know, I'm not letting my son get hurt like that. So me seeing your mom like right there in the corner watching Karen. you fight, bro. I was like, "That's a strong woman." Yeah, she's very strong. My dad bro. said the same thing. My mom went through a lot of stuff, and bro, she she used to live in projects like really bad hmm. and she had me at a young age right and i watched my mom work all her life to now she has her own business and That's her own good, store I'm happy to hear that too. she's really like a great example for me because she's not she don't have the masculine energy like me but yes she's still doing all these fucking these strong things like she's really like fucking buckling the belt and she really had to kind of like be the man mm -hmm. yeah. does she have a website for her business yeah, it's uh, send me the link afterwards. Shit. I'll put the description down for her business if you guys are interested down below in the description. Yeah, my mom does she does great stuff. She really likes helping people with pain physically, mentally, emotionally. That's what Ayurveda is all about. Ayurveda's been practiced for five hundred years. It comes from India mm -hmm. and it's uh they read your tongue, they mm -hmm. go through all everything that you eat, what time do you poop, like everything, bro. And it's it's an individual practice, not like a like the doctors now, they're more like, like uh, I don't know how to put it. It's not individual for yourself. They're like, oh, you have cancer, you're gonna get this treatment. They're not. They're not learning everything about yourself and making you your own yeah, yeah, medicine, yeah, right. your own individual medicine. Gosh, gotcha, you gotcha. And that's that's what Ayurveda is about. The, the re respecting individuals and their own lives and and their own uniqueness. Mm -hmm. And it, it's it really helps a lot. Really Remember, you, you've learned a lot. And I can see that. Like, just from here talking to you and, like, listening to you, you have learned a lot. You've and changed a lot, too. I can I can really credit that to Ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. She's 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 the grandmother of all medicines in, in the world, which is what the medicines that God gave us. Bro, mm -hmm. your people have medicine, too. Oh, um, must they have? The, the tribal people. Hold up. Wait, which, which tribe? Give me a second. Just, where I, just tribal people in general. Yeah, they all they all have their own medicine, their own practice. There's also another medicine. It's called Wachumas or Wachumas. San, What's that? San Pedro, San, San Pedro. Mm -hmm. San Pedro. It's a cactus, and that's grandfather. So when you take that medicine, it kind of goes into your subconscious mind, and it brings it out, and you become more like aware of of your subconscious mind, but consciously. I want to watch have... Avatar. Mm -hmm. You ever so it was like that shit that uh, Sokka took? No. Ah. Oh. I want to have remember. an experience like that. That bro, that's why I love anime, bro. Because I really <laughs> feel it's like my life. Like, right. I live like an anime, bro. You're you telling do. all the shit, and you're literally, you literally sound like 
uh, like what every animes MC, have you watched, bro? Huh? What animes have you watched? Oh, I like Naruto and Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. I used to check that, one, bro. Yes, sir. We were talking about that shit. We were talking about that shit, bro. I really fell in love with Naruto. There's just so many episodes, bro. Mm -hmm. There's so many. And so many teachings. That's why I like... Yeah, no, you learn a lot. I grew up off that shit, bro. When I didn't have like... um, I didn't have like... uh, I would say like guidance or something on a certain topic or a certain aspect of life. Mm -hmm. That shit taught it to me, bro. Think about it like this. Look at Like Rock Lee Mm -hmm. wasn't born with anything special. Oh, I love Rock Lee. Rock Lee's a warrior, bro. People sleep on him. He's a warrior. He he had nothing but himself. It's what you do it's with what you work. have. Right. He's Rock Lee is a representation of, of hard, hard work, work and dedication. Yeah. What you, you it's what you, it's what you do with what you have. It, how I said before. What you do, yes. Exactly. You know, just like, like what that. you guys were saying, like how like um regardless of the situation, like whether you want to be good or evil, that's your choice. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Yeah. Like there's a lot of um a lot of cases in that show where, say, someone had a rough life, the other person had a rough life, but they all had different outcomes. You know what I'm saying? Like Kakashi, you know, every single one of his like people, his loved one died, but he never came out evil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, still, he still was good. He could have. He could have been a badass villain, bro. Think of Naruto. He could have been a badass Naruto, villain. Naruto, yeah. It, but Naruto had that heart. Right, you know? he had that. Well, he had that dream. That's mm-hmm. the thing, bro. That I like about Naruto is I can relate to all the characters. I, I feel the same. Bro. Yeah, yeah, and it's really cool. Like even um in Dragon Ball Z with Gohan, he's more timid. Mm-hmm. You know, but he's he, my favorite he, character too. I, 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 he's my favorite right. character. Even though I be throwing up M's, he's my favorite. He's, character. he's I like uh, Goku and Vegeta, bro. My dad's favorite like, Vegeta. I feel like both of them, <laughs> like in one person. Yeah, uh, I could be a fucking dick sometimes, or I can be like. A nice person. You're Vegito? <laughs> yeah, I'm Vegito. And then, like, I like it when Goku wants to just fight. Like, if somebody thinks somebody's stronger than him, he's, he's like, like, I want to fight he's that accepting guy. all Challenge. squabbles. Like, yeah, yeah, squabbles on deck at all times. Every time. That's kind of how I am. Like, like people... You're never afraid of a challenge. No. I, if, so, if I hear somebody say, oh, that's the best guy right there, I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, I want to fight him. Mm-hmm. Like, let, let's see who's really the best. Uh-huh. You're that's never what, scared of an opponent? I get scared, yeah. bro, but it makes What's me train hard. Fear? But oh, okay. So this, you think that the fear motivates you? Yeah, that, that, that's good. Like Mike Tyson, bro. He says fear is like fire. It could burn your house, or you could cook with it. If you don't have fear, you're not human. Yeah. What is man without fear? Yeah. If if, but that's the thing though is that I constantly conquer my fears. Mm-hmm. I, I I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. But I'm fucking facing that shit, mm-hmm. and I'm right in his face, and. I, I'm, and then I go through it, and then it's like, what the fuck was I scared of? <laughs> and I'm like that, yeah, that shit was scary, but I got this shit. You yeah, know that's I mean? cool. That's good, bro. You I, see, I'm, I'm glad that I'm hearing all this shit from you, dude. Thank you, bro. See, I like, I like hearing positive stuff coming out of positive people now. Yeah, me too, man. And I try to, I try. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm like the best at it, but I do try to, kind of give that stuff back to the positivity. Mm. Man, that's what the birds is all about, man. The birds, the birds is all about the positivity, bro. <laughs> Just trying to see everybody grow. You give what you get. <laughs> exactly. And it's, it may not be from other people, but it's like, spir- like even if we're speaking spiritually, like the world does give back what you give out. Yeah. Right. It's, it's so true. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you think it's not, but then you look back at it maybe years later and you're like, fuck. Mm-hmm. It's so you true. You look at the progress. And it- the, thing, the thing about it, bro, is it, what I also think is crazy is you can manifest a lot of things with a woman. Mm-hmm. Like, so you know how they say that a man and a woman together are like God? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So say you got a girlfriend and you, you tell her all this stuff. Like, she's a good girlfriend, right? And you're like, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And like what you tell her, it really comes to fruition even more because it's two people trying to manifest one thing. Exactly. No, and that's why a lot, a lot of um, people end up being divorced. Because it's not on that same way. Like, and yeah. they need to be. They need to somehow fix that. That's why divorce has gotten so high up. Yeah. I saw this video one time and it said, like, um, it was two older people. He's like, how did you make it work? He's like, we've been married for 80 or something years. And the reason that we made it work is because people have gotten the idea of when it's broken, we throw it away and we get something new. We replace it. Back then when I grew up, we grew up with the idea of if something is broken, you need to fix it. And don't stop until you fix it. Mm. Not go throw it away for a brand new. 
Yeah. You always end up fixing it. And I'm that's like, some that's strong good, shit. Yeah. And that's what I like to see too. Older people or wiser people. Yeah. People with more experience. They teach you so much shit. Bro, experience is the greatest teacher in life. It really is. Yeah. But sometimes you don't have to experience bad things to learn. And mm-hmm. that's also a good thing too. I think that's really being... You save yourself. Really being wise. Is, but... Is being able... Like before, bro, I used to see people do drugs, right? Mm-hmm. And, I, and I did drugs. And they would overdose. Some people died. Like rest in peace to Tommy and to Jeremy and a lot of my other friends, Shamir. And it's like these people were going down that road before me. And then I started doing it, and I'm like, I'm not going to die. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. I'm not going to die. And luckily, bro, gracefully, I didn't die. But the thing is, is that I could have died. Yeah. I, I got you. lucky, but yeah. I learned that. Cause I remember. Bro, I'm, no, I'm no different than these people. Like, I, what makes me better than them? Yeah, yeah. Nothing. You're still human. You yeah, know, I'm it's, human. It could happen to anybody. I remember when I saw you at that 7-Eleven, I, was, I even told you, I was like, take care of yourself, all right? Like, I, like, you know, as a thing, I went back to my cousin, I was like, bro, I hope you, do it. like, yeah. stops, so that's good. Because, you know, I saw you as, the, and not everybody, the wrestler of the school, you know? You were uh, really good. I looked you. up to you a lot. Thank and you. And I was like, hopefully he does, he does better. Yeah. And you did, and I'm glad that you did. That's why I feel happy having you here, because I see the, I saw the progress. Even if I didn't know you all that well, I did see you from the sideline. Hey, man, I appreciate it. I'm still, I still got a lot of work to do. And I'm going to be on the sideline still, bro. Man. Watching Likewise, you progress. Bro. Always going to be in the corner. But I think we're going to end the podcast episode here. 24, one hour and 24 minutes in. Awesome. Had a good Pretty session good. with you, man. No cap, bro. Thank you, guys. Likewise. Good talking to you, my guy. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Again, again, everything's going to be down below if you guys want to go check that out. All of his uh, mom's uh, company stuff, yeah. all of his stuff, his socials. Bees Natural Store in Hesperia. Yes, sir. Other than that, I'll catch y'all all later. Make sure to buy your kickback merch. Other than that, that's it. Hey, Thanks for thank watching. Thank you. Yes, sir, bro. Thanks for coming along.